Hi, I'm Andrea Scott, and this presentation is Beyond the Metrics, a look into a program review process for sustaining OER. I'm the OER coordinator for the Office of Learning Advancement, and I'm joined here with my colleague, which um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jamila Alani, and I am the program review specialist at Salt Lake Community College out of the Office of Institutional Effectiveness. Great. Um, can we move to the next slide? So Salt Lake Community College is Utah's largest college with the most diverse student body. It serves more than 60,000 students on 10 campuses across the Salt Lake Valley. Salt Lake Community College is located on the Native American shared territory of the Goshute, Navajo, Paiute, Shoshone, and Ute people. We honor the original ancestors of this land and also offer respect to the other tribal communities. We acknowledge this history to cultivate respect for and advocate with our indigenous students and communities still connected to this land. Open SLCC is a large scale OER program with an estimated 21 million um, in student cost savings with 11,730 sections to date. Open SLCC, Open SLCC partnered with uh, the Office of Strategic um, Analysis and Accreditation to perform a non-instructional program review. Um, our goal in this presentation is to walk you through the steps um, of an SLCC program review process, provide tips and lessons learned, and tools and resources. Um, can you move to the next slide? We wanna share with you some samples of what our tracking looked like in the beginning. Um, these images tell the story of our assessment journey and document our first attempts to track and share data. At the time, we didn't know how to track or even insight what insights we were hoping to gain from the tracking. We knew tracking data was crucial, but didn't have a set data plan or standardized methodology for tracking. So we start with what we knew um, and gathered as much non-invasive data as we could. Um, these, methods, these methods are basic and simple, but sharing demonstrates that um, everybody starts somewhere, and this is our beginning. Can you move to the next slide, please? Um, since the beginning of our initiative, um, our program has grown and our metrics have grown as well. Um, but our assessment efforts have lagged. Um, starting in 2019, that we are program underwent several changes uh, and transitions in leadership. Um, in the summer of 2021, under the recommendation of the Open SLC Advisory Committee um, and college leadership, the program was moved from faculty development and transformational educational initiatives under um, institutional effectiveness to the Office of Academic Affairs under the Office of Learning Advancement. The OER program now leads the Open SLCC team, a cross institutional collaborative team consisting of members um, and support from library services, academic affairs, faculty development and transformational educational initiatives, and student services. At the time of our transition, no official assessment or audit had been conducted on the program. Under new leadership and with additional focus on OER, we made a decision to undergo the process of uh, program review. The goal uh, was to examine our program goals and outcomes, also to explore um, how the program aligned with the institution's strategic plan, to re-examine our vision and statement of purpose, and to develop, to develop methods of better understanding our strengths, weakness, weaknesses, and areas of um, opportunities for growth, and also to provide an ongoing plan for assessment. Um, can you move to the next slide? So how the program review can assist OER programs with sustainability um, there's several thoughts here. Um, it can help um, provide insights that can be shared with your institution and the broader community. Um, it encourages reflection, transparency, and accountability. Um, it encourages asking the questions, what's working, what's not, and why. Um, it can be a strategy to promote further institutional buy-in. Um, that's something uh, at times OER programs do struggle with, so providing additional um, light on that. Um, also an exploration of further qualitative and quantitative assessment tools. Um, at times, um, managing an OER program can be daunting, balancing the limited resource, resources with the program needs. Um, the program review process helps provide an alternative view to balance those efforts. Um, lastly, it also provides um, diverse levels of expertise and experience to enrich the quality of the feedback and results. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I would like to go over with you the basic structure of program review here at Salt Lake Community College. 
enhancing our program review um, at our, our college was part of our strategic plan to align with our goals. Um, we saw a great need in um, acknowledging our different programs and what are their perceived outcomes. How are these programs working together to better serve our community, our students, our faculty, and our staff? And when we had this process of program review, we wanted to see how all the programs are fitting together to better serve what our, our outcome is and what our goal is. If we just have everyone working independently, there's, there's little cohesion and we're not gonna meet our goals and we're not gonna meet our outcomes. So this was why our program review process was put in place. This also helps us understand the progress of each department. Um, where, where have you, what has the progression been over the past couple of years? And what are the needs of our students? How do we keep up with those adaptations? Um, how can we integrate different part, departments together and programs together? How can they better work together to meet their goals and needs? What kind of quality are we putting out there? Are we efficient in, in our work and are we being effective? And most importantly, how are we serving our customer, our students? Are we meeting their needs? Um, are we hearing their voice? Um, are we, you know, um, working together as we should? So what is a non-instructional program review? We have broken this up into three categories. The self-study, which is a lengthy document put together by the director or coordinator, giving the history, um, current projects, needs of improvement, points of pride. The external review, um, which is an a third party that comes in and evaluates your program and gives you recommendations. Lastly, there's the action plan of what are you, what do you plan on doing? What is your roadmap? And we like to condense this into what can be done in about a two to three year time span. The self report or self study um, is all this information gathering, data collection, evaluating your program, um, using your expertise as to what's working, what's not working, where could you, where would you want to be, um, defining your program and your purpose. Now, this also relies heavily on defining your outcome. Sometimes we get so goal um focus that we forget what, a, what is our outcome? What are we looking to see to see if the program is effective? So we really wanna highlight that. Um, what are your debar department level goals? Um, resource allocation, what does your personnel look like? What does your budgeting look like? Where are you just putting all of your efforts? Are you, are you wasting your efforts in areas that maybe aren't that valuable to your students or to your, your your customer to your stakeholders, and how can you better reallocate your resources? What are your areas of improvement? How can they be improved? What could you do? Once you start digging, you will find so much. You will find so much that it might be overwhelming, and, and it will also be exciting at the same time. But stay focused to what you wanna work on. Data and metrics are very important to include. Um, we'll go into that in a little more detail later on. As Andrea explained, uh, OER's partnerships with library services, with faculty development, who do you work with? Are you meeting their needs? Are they meeting your needs? Is the relationship working? What kind of gaps are there and how can you better improve it? 
and to identify the stakeholders within your program. Who are you serving and are you meeting their expectations? And how can you find out if you're meeting their expectations? External reviews. Um, here at Salt Lake Community College, we, uh, we require at least two external reviewers, one from in-state and one from out-of-state. Now this can be the director or coordinator's choice. Um, but obviously within a cross-functional area to what your program is, so they can be knowledgeable of industry trends to give you the recommendations input that will be valuable to you. Um, the director or coordinator sets up uh, meetings with various stakeholders, and at times the director will be present, and at times we request that they not be present so that people may speak freely um, and we can get the most out of this um, analysis. Um, this can either be done on site or virtual, uh, whatever you're choosing is. Lastly, the action plan is a compilation of the two processes about what are you gonna, what do you plan to do in the next two to three years? What do you believe is a good uh, roadmap for you to follow and um, that will address major concerns um, from your self-study and external review? At Salt Lake Community College, we do have a three-year follow-up from the program review where we come back to the program and we go over this action plan and we just kind of discuss where are you on this, are you? Do you still want to stick to this plan now that you're actually working on it? Do you see it as possible? What do you want to change about it? And did you get the resources and assistance you needed from the college to be able to complete your action plan? And if you did not get that assistance, what are you in need of? And we report this to our cabinet, which is. Um, our, our president and our vi vice presidents, and our office would present this on the program's behalf to show their needs and where they're, they are in order to meet their objectives. Mm -hmm. Now, there are various ways for you to go about analyzing your program and improving your program. One thing to be mindful of is qualitative and quantitative data. Um, one misconception is to say, I have no data. I have nothing to go off of. And you, you always have something to go off of, whether that is um, numbers, tracking, or whether that's just your expertise or your um, you know, your intuition of how your program is going. So qualitative would be, you know, how many students are using their OER resources? Um, do they come back, uh, you know, semester after semester? Do we have them reoccurring? Um, quantitative would be more like OER assists in student completion. That's a perceived outcome. But does it really? How can we further investigate that to answer this question? If you want more data than what you have, create the data collection plan to at least get it in the future. Use what you have now and work on what you would like to know for the future. Simple measures such as surveys or for focus groups would give you a lot of feedback. Have focus groups with your faculty why are faculty members committed to working with OER and why are others not? And how can you meet their needs to further your program and further your relationships? Um, determine your goals and determine your outcomes. Um, Andrea will share with us what OER at Salt Lake Community College's vision is which is also an outcome, what we should be seeing from this program. How can we know that it's effective? What 
indicators are we looking for to see if it's effective? Personally, I draw upon Lean Six Sigma's program management tools to assist directors and coordinators through this program review process of how to measure, analyze, and improve and set controls in place. Um, these are tools that help us understand one another and understand picking apart the various um, aspects of the program that we want to improve and how can we clarify this into sections to be able to get the, the results that we want. Okay, so I'm gonna discuss a little bit the highlights gained through the open SLCC self-study. Um, so we were able to, during the process, we redrafted our vision and statement of purpose to better reflect our current goals and desired outcomes. Um, it provided us a chance to take a pause and gather um, and evaluate further feedback um, to better um, determine uh, the resources we had and capacity and also to prioritize um, our immediate needs. Um, within this, this whole process, we identified um, some inequities and inconsistency with our stipend uh, process. Um, we conducted several landscape analyses of other OER programs, uh, performed a program comparison, and identified strategies that other institutions were using um, that, to address um, similar challenges. Uh, we developed a data collection plan, um, gathering disaggregated data um, by uh, underserved populations. Um, and then we identified um, areas to build in basic ongoing assessment and surveys. Um, we implemented the Dewar's equity, Blue Equity Framework and Rubric. Um, and so those are just a few examples of some of um, the highlights we gained. Um, can you move to the next slide, please, Jamal? Thank you. So here you'll see um, we, uh, we actually didn't, at the beginning of this, we did not have a vision statement um, for our program. Um, but we took the Open SLCC team, we took a year long, um, it was a year long process of gathering feedback. We hosted several uh, focus groups. We consulted with the Open SLCC Advisory Committee and also um, spoke with people informally just to get some, some ideas about um, whatever, what people are seeing our, our future vision. Um, so this is, we're very happy to, to share this. This is our new vision. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? We also redrafted our statement of purpose. At the top, you can see our original statement of purpose. And what we realized is as our program has grown, this was drafted oh, at the beginning, I think in 2015. And although there's um, still some context within here um, that is relevant to our statement of purpose, it doesn't capture the full picture of where our program is now or where we have grown. Um, we realized that we were missing some pieces um, specifically in um, the way that we assist faculty. So we serve students, but we also serve faculty. And then our pieces uh, within the, the equity, diversity, inclusion work that we've been doing, and have been part of the work that we've been doing, but to make it more intentional and visible. Um, so can you move to the next slide, please? We also, um, in the process, were able to um, design and disseminate a, a survey. We partnered with data science and analytics on this. And our OER faculty fellow at the time um, was able to assist with drafting the questions. Um, we worked together as a team to do it. We had three different um, population, target populations. One was for OER faculty author survey. Um, the other was a department survey. And then the third was for non-OER faculty survey. Um, the OER faculty survey was mainly to gather information based on the services that um, the faculty had received and any kind of future services they would like to see. Um, the department survey was based on um, information we were trying to gather regarding our stipend and uh, payment uh, compensation process and any challenges around that. The non-OER faculty survey was really just to gauge um, faculty who are not currently participating in OER, why and what, what kind of services they, they may want to see. Um, okay, you can move to the next slide, please. Thanks, Jamila. So we also had the opportunity to work with data science and analytics um, to um, create these demographics of disaggregated data. Um, we don't have all the examples here. These are just a few examples of the populations, um, but we did pull age, um, ethnicity, and race, um, first generation, gender identity. Those are just to name a few. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? So 
finally, we'd like to leave you with some tips of um, how tips for conducting an OER program review. Um, conducting a self-study or a full program review can be daunting. Um, and, and sometimes, in some cases, the resources may not be available. So if resources are not available to perform a full program review, um, you can consider doing a self-study first. Uh, we'll be sharing the link below at the end um, that will give you access to our um, process uh, that we use at SLCC um, for program review that includes an area for self-study, uh, a guideline. Um, also, um, it helps, um, or to determine, I guess, Another thought too is that you wanna determine your priorities and scope. And I, I believe we talked about this a bit too, but it's, I really struggled with this personally. It's not realistic to address all challenges within a, a review. Um, Jamila and I had several sessions going back and forth where um, we discussed um, adding those items to a later time that while we will address them, they're not something that's a priority at this moment. Um, get creative. Um, in the beginning, we had we had our metrics, we had some information, um, but we also um, felt like we were missing several pieces. So we started, we had lots of conversations with faculty, um, some with students, with um, college leadership, and other stakeholders just to get a pulse on the culture. Um, we, I, I can't even, I, I haven't kept track of exactly how many, but we had lots of conversations. And some of those were, um, some of those were planned and some of those were just walking down the hall and, and chatting with someone when it was an appropriate time. Um, also, um, internal institutional departments may be able to help you um, with your work um, with a self-study. So maybe you could do a little digging and find out um, who might be available to help or who may want to be, partner with you in your efforts. Um, develop a timeline and a plan um, and plan for several delays. This may sound basic, but it was something that actually very much helped um, for us to have a set deadlines and um, we constantly revisited this timeline. Um, also another benefit we have of being the OER, with the OER community is we're very good at sharing. We're very generous with sharing. Um, there are several tools out there um, that can be used for program review. Some of the tools that we used were the Doers uh, Blueprint Equity Framework rubric and also the RPK SUNY OER Sustainability Evaluation uh, Framework and, and Evaluation Plan. Can you move to the next slide, please? Okay, so why was program review helpful? Um, we are not completely through the entire process. Um, we are done with our self-study, um, so I can speak to those pieces. Um, but we have now, we feel confident in that we have been able to explore what, what gaps are missing in our assessment. What can we, and we have a data plan moving forward and uh, of how we can um, further um, assess the, the effectiveness of our program. And then we are also on that three-year cycle as well that will be reviewed within three years. Um, we uncovered several insights affecting the, the program effectiveness um, that several of those were very surprising. I've worked with the program for um, several years and some of those things were things I had, I, I thought I, not to say that I know everything, but there were, there were several pieces within there that were surprising. Um, so that was, that was great. And then I think this is maybe something you wouldn't think of or associate normally with maybe a program review, but I really feel like um, having some of those conversations and being able to have these focus groups, it, it really strengthened our internal relationships with our partners and our faculty um, because it opened the door to having these transparent conversations of discussing the challenges that we're having and um, opportunities for us to work together in the future. Um, so that was, that was a third point too. I also think um, when we are, um, you know, with program met metrics, they're always a valuable tool, but I do think um, when we're looking specifically just at the metrics, we're denying ourselves the opportunity to uh, critically examine deeper level of assessment that's crucial to, um, to sustainability efforts. So those are my thoughts and um, some helpful tips. And um, can you move to the next slide? Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as I mentioned before, Jamila and I mentioned, um, this is a, a resource here um, created, created by Jamila's office, which Jamila also is a creator here. Um, you can scan the QR code to gain access to these resources and we hope they will be um, helpful for your institution. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.